Welcome to this virtual baccalaureate service celebrating the class of 2020. Today, the pews of Wireman Chapel and the entire Eckerd campus are empty. None of us saw this coming. Yet you, the class of 2020, are resilient and prepared for the challenges of this moment. As we gather for this service, we are remembering who we are, connecting with this place, our roots, and with one another. In a few moments, Dr. Eastman will offer his remarks to the graduates and their families. We are grateful for the graduating seniors assisting in the leadership of this service and for Professor Brent Douglas at the Flint Trop organ here in Wireman Chapel. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the class of 2020 on this very special commencement weekend. Of all the sciences, I am the science of the soul. When people engage in debate, I am the logic of their arguments. When people speak or write, I am the grammar that holds their words together. I am time, which never ends. I am the creator who sees all. In music, I am the melody. And in poetry, I am the meter. I am the shrewdness of those who lead. I am the silence of those whose voice is never heard. I am the wisdom of the wise. As we gather in the presence of the Lord, the author of knowledge, the source of wisdom and truth, we join in affirming the lives and achievements of those we honor today. Let us listen for wisdom in all we hear and praise the Lord's many names with thanksgiving and joyfulness. Selected from Michelet, the Proverbs of the Tanakh. Wisdom cries out in the streets. How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thought to you. I will make my words known to you if you indeed cry out for insight and raise voice for understanding. If you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From God's mouth come knowledge and understanding. God stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice. Therefore, walk in the ways of the good and keep to the paths of the just. Thus ends this holy reading. Bless these words to our hearing and understanding. The next reading comes from the Quran and the Islamic tradition. O you who believe, be steadfast and upright for God, bearing witness with justice, and never let hatred of the people cause you to deal unjustly with them. Be just, that is close to piety. Serve Allah and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, those in need, neighbors who are near, neighbors who are strangers, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and what your right hands possess. For Allah loveth not the arrogant or the vainglorious. O you who believe, you shall give to charity from the good things you earn, and from what we have produced for you from the earth. Do not pick out the bad therein to give away, when you yourselves do not accept it, unless your eyes are closed. You should know that God is rich and praiseworthy. Those who believe and do deeds of righteousness and establish regular prayers and regular charity will have their reward with their Lord. 
On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Thus ends this holy reading. Bless these words to our hearing and understanding. comes from 1 Corinthians 13 in the Christian tradition. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. Thus ends this holy reading. Bless these words to our hearing and understanding. I would like to invite everyone to join me in a moment of prayer. Before we begin, I would like to address this prayer to a higher power because I know that we all come from diverse faith and spiritual backgrounds. For some of us, the higher power will be God with a capital G. For others, the wider universe, and for others still, a higher power might be our own higher level of consciousness. To the higher power. Today we are joined together as one community. The soon-to-be graduates of this community are grateful for everyone who has supported us through the last few years and who continues to support us into the future. Four years of college brings a lot of challenges. Probably our biggest challenge was to leave campus in the middle of our last spring semester. How do we adjust to being college students at home? While making this adjustment, We've had the opportunity to remember and reflect on some of our favorite moments from before all of this. For me, some of these have been taking pictures with friends before spring ball, studying abroad over winter term, and even as simple as watching movies with friends in our dorm lounges. We also think about who we were when we were first years. We've grown a lot since then. 
<laughs> this shy girl that felt a little pot, bit of imposter syndrome during move-in weekend has grown up to have a lot of confidence in the person she is and in the decisions that she makes. I hope that all of us can say that we've changed for the better since our time at Eckerd. And when we think about who we were and who we are now, we also think about who we want to be. May my fellow students of the class of 2020 continue to grow into the confident people we are and who we are becoming. And may we use that confidence to make our world a better place for all. Amen. Good afternoon. In my final baccalaureate address at our beautiful and beloved campus, I want to talk to you about many things, many things. However, I will confine myself to one, one that I hope will resonate with you and hold you in good stead when you need it most. I'm astounded to be talking to you today about the power of belief. Astounded because I consider myself a rational man, a secular, pragmatic, hard-headed, no-nonsense, straightforward person, rarely driven by romance and emotion, except when necessary. I endeavor to follow John Donne's dictum, to doubt wisely. But Eckerd College has changed me. You know how we proclaim that Eckerd College changes lives? Well, mine is one of them. Nearly 20 years ago in my first convocation address, reaching for a metaphor, a formulation for possibility for future success for a college that was financially in dire straits, a formulation that was not a cliche or a cheesy tagline but something I could, if I tried hard enough, believe, or at least hope to believe. I came upon a line by one of America's greatest poets, Robert Frost, a man whose wisdom you can trust. Frost says belief is knowledge that one cannot prove. It has a kind of power, a power like foreknowledge that believes itself into being. Frost turns the cliche of believing in the future, a senseless formulation since we have no idea what the future holds, into believing the future in, a rearrangement that demands that we reassess the role and the power and the mechanism of belief. I wasn't sure I understood how this was supposed to work, but I knew I needed, and the college needed, a call to transcendence, a call to a new level of commitment and performance. And so in the early days of this century, I asked our trustees and faculty and staff and students to join in the vital cause of believing the future in for Eckerd College, and they did. Although many have told me that at the time they did not think the college had a future, they believed. And that made their commitment and their labor exemplary. That belief was an expression of imagination. Together, over time, we were imagining and creating a different culture for the college. We were believing the future in. I've been privileged to be the mouthpiece for the college as its faculty, staff, trustees, and alumni and friends have worked to create this new culture. But it has been the work of the community that has done the job, not the music of the trumpeter. I'm reminded of Winston Churchill's great line when he was being acclaimed the Lion of Great Britain. 
It was the English people who were the lions. I only provided the roar. Robert Frost makes clear in his statements about poetry and belief that he is building on the work of the philosopher William James, whose most famous work is the will to believe. Many of us are uncomfortable with certain practices and positions of established religion at the beginning of the third decade of the 21st century. But we are also not content with a wholly secular life, what the Duke theologian Stanley Hauerwas calls one damn thing after another. We want more than that, more than life without purpose or mission or values beyond our own personal interest. This is what so many young people mean when they talk about being spiritual, but not religious. They want to believe in something, some set of values beyond themselves. They long for a community, a culture that values the eternal, no matter the religion. At least one location of such a community and culture is Eckerd College. Our mission is clear. The thoughtful education of traditionally aged undergraduates in an individually student-sized, mentor-led environment. A culture of respect and tolerance for others. Embracing differences of skin color and gender, sexual orientation, and body type and personal background. A general agreement that we are being educated to serve others as well as ourselves. Remembering St. Paul's admonition that if I have all knowledge and have not love, I have nothing. We vigorously oppose the degradation of the natural world and we embrace the increasing recognition in the Western world that animals, all creatures, great and small, have consciousness. And our treatment of and relationship to animals deserves and is beginning to get a complete revaluation. Such are the features of the Eckerd culture, treated by all of us most of the time with care and respect, as are the individuals who are part of that culture. Eckerd alumni, whose ranks you now join, carry that culture with them when they go out into the world to find work and love and adventure and fulfillment. All of us who believe in the transcendent cause of life-changing power, of undergraduate education in the service of building a better world have created this culture, one student experience at a time. This is the culture and the institution believed into being by all those who have worked for, lived at, and supported Eckerd College. That culture will remain long after the terrible challenges of the coronavirus are distant memories. For you graduates to be, and for me, it is time to go. But we are not likely to forget the quality or the values or the magic of the Eckerd culture. We will not forget the setting for the magic that happens here. The palm trees waving in the breeze, the dazzling sands and the glistening nights, or the ravishing sunsets over the Gulf of Mexico. We will remember and we will think from time to time that we experienced something here that was holy. And we did. Bon voyage and good luck. Almighty and ever-living God, we do all, always and everywhere to give you thanks. For you are the God of our weary years. 
the God of our silent tears who have brought us this far on the way. Today we gather in Thanksgiving for the graduating class of 2020. Although they are not physically present, oh God, they unite spiritually as women and men, daunted yet hopeful, bent but not broken, able to face the challenges of a nation and a world that will come together. We ask your grace and blessing upon our students as they embark on a world that is changed by the crisis we face. But may they be a part of its renewal and rejuvenation as people come together to build bridges and construct new roads to create new possibilities for a world that is more just, more loving, seeking the dignity of all. We ask you to bless them and keep them always united in your love, for you are God forever and ever, and we all say, Amen.